Welcome to the Shearwalls online tutorial for the US edition. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to model a single wall instead of an entire building, how to apply a seismic or wind force or load manually, and how to add additional loads such as wind uplift and dead loads. Here is a simple building. When you want to design a single shear wall, we only really care about that particular wall geometry. So it is only a matter of drawing a single structure block, specifying the extents of the structure block, going to the wall input view, modifying the length of the wall, then going to the openings view and adding any openings. You can then return to the wall input view and specify desired wall details for your shear line. All of the walls in this structure are designed with the same materials and framing details, but we will only be focusing on shear line A1, which has an opening of 5 feet with a 10 feet offset from the edge, as you can see in this elevation view. Since we will only apply a load to one shear line, we will uncheck the feature to conduct a rigid analysis. This will prevent a warning expressing that the rigid analysis was not performed because not all shear lines were loaded once we run the design. Instead of generating automatic loads, let's open the loads and forces view to manually add loads. The message that pops up is a reminder of the recommended steps to follow when adding manual loads. By clicking OK, you can see that when adding a new load, you have the choice of its type, profile, location, and magnitude. There is also a feature where you can add a factored force directly parallel to the shear line. Since we only want to demonstrate the effect of a load on a single shear line, which is wall line A1, we will check this feature and add a factored wind point force of 10,500 pounds parallel to shear line A1. If I did not toggle this factored force option, I would have added an unfactored wind load, which, after running the design, would have been factored by 0.6 as per load combination 5 or 7 from ASC7. As soon as we run the design, a warning appears stating that undercapacity shear walls were found. By going to the design summary, we can quickly determine which wall fails the design. For this reason, this section is very practical, especially when multiple walls are involved in the design. Furthermore, by navigating to the wind design, flexible diaphragm, shear results, you can determine exactly which segment of the wall was under capacity. In this case, both wall segments fail to resist the wind shear, which generates the following warning in red. For more details on information generated in the design result pages, refer to the series of video 5, Understanding the Results. Now, we will redesign our wall with other materials so it has sufficient capacity to withstand the 10,500 pounds factored wind force. By adjusting the thickness of the structural sheathing from 3 8 of an inch into 19 32 of an inch and rerunning the design, the ratios of the previously failed wall segments are now below 1.0. That being said, Properties of the newly designed wall can resist the 10,500 pounds factored wind force. When designing with shear walls, and when automatically generating loads, only horizontal wind loads are generated based on the walls and roof areas. In reality, vertical loads like wind uplift and dead loads that resist the overturning forces also exist, but these are not generated by the woodwork software as the distribution of such load is dependent on the layout of the roof framing members. Since it is not currently possible to specify the framing details in shear walls, it is necessary to apply these loads manually, which I will demonstrate next. You can access and add those wind uplift loads manually by going to the Loads and Forces tab. Adding wind uplift and dead loads to resist overturning does not contribute to the lateral loads that the light frame wood shear walls will be designed for, but these loads do have an influence on the hold downs present in the structure. Let's see the effect on the hold downs with and without those added vertical loads. Let's rerun the wall we just looked at, but using a factored wind shear point force of 6000 pounds instead of the 10,500 pounds. By going to the wind design, flexible diaphragm, hold down design, you can see in the critical response column that the hold downs on the left and right segment of wall A1 are at 44% of their capacity. We will now add a wind uplift load of 1000 PLF to the same model. You would determine your uplift based on your local climatic data and wind pressure coefficients in ASCE7. 
Note that the wind load entered will be factored for ASD by 0.6. By rerunning the design with this new wind uplift, we can see that the hold downs on the left and right sides of the opening now have a response ratio above 1.0. Therefore, there are under capacity and a higher capacity hold downs would be required. Now, let's take a look at the option to manually add dead loads. Similarly to wind uplift, dead loads are not automatically generated by the Shearwall software. To account for a realistic uniform dead load from the roof, we will assume half of the total roof dead load goes into shearline A and the other half goes to shearline B. The dead load of the roof is 22 PSF, so the width, which is 25 feet, divided by 2 times 22 PSF equals to 275 PLF. You can see the influence of both wind uplift and dead load added to the structure, as well as the original 6,000 pound wind shear in the elevation view. Additionally, the effect of these loads on their respective hold downs are also displayed at the bottom. So, while it was conservative to only add an additional wind uplift, adding dead load can help counteract the effect of the wind in the hold down design. By including dead load, in addition to the wind uplift, the critical response of the hold downs has dropped by more than 20% compared to the previous case without dead load. This difference could prove to be more significant in a larger structure. In fact, in this example, the combined hold down force is back below the design capacity for all of the hold downs.